Today we're going to be continuing our deep dive with DaVinci Resolve 19's newest features and have a look at the Film Look Creator. It is a new plugin which could very possibly put the likes of Dehancer and Film Convert on the extinction list as it does everything that they do but maybe a little bit better. Let's have a look at how well it performs up against Film Convert. Okay so I'm here in DaVinci Resolve and Unlike a typical grading session, I'm going to apply both Film Convert and then Film Creator onto a singular node. And I typically don't tend to do this. I've been a user of Film Convert for a very long time. And usually I will build out my grade and append Film Convert on the end and reduce the strength of the node. So we're just bringing in a little bit of that filmic goodness from the folks over at Film Convert. So I've added it to the second node here. And to get started, I'm gonna choose my camera profile. Let's go to Blackmagic Design. We're using the 6K with the Gen 5 color science. I do find Film Convert can be quite generous with its contrast off the bat. So we're gonna to have to bump this up to bring life back into the image. And likewise, it's a little bit too warm. It is springtime in this shot, but it's not that warm, at least not here in the UK. And likewise, really want to remove that magenta and introduce some green into the shot. Okay, and then we have the film settings here, which is arguably the biggest draw of Film Convert, where we have a vast variety of film stocks to pick and choose their color information and, and uh, gamma information from. And we have a range of motion picture film stocks right the way down to uh, 35 millimeter and even Polaroid looking film stocks. So this is arguably um, what the money is worth when it comes to film convert because it's not as if uh, we can just dial these in quite easily with Resolve whereas with film convert it is pretty much a click of a button. In regards to this, I'm gonna leave the film color and the Cineon to print film the same, but I am gonna introduce some saturation because it was looking a little bit lifeless. So look. Okay, that's looking better. Next, let's have a look at halation. Now halation is the current in trend, which is kind of funny because film manufacturers spent so much time in ensuring that the film didn't have elation because it's essentially an artifact. It's when light surpasses the film emulsion, reflects back and creates a halo around the brighter areas of the image. And um, while it was a attribute of 35 millimeter film and, and obviously larger and smaller, um, it was a negative attribute. But uh, here we are adding it back into digital images. So I'm gonna click enable. And I do see that we have um, a watermark on the image and I didn't realize this when I recently updated Film Convert but Film Convert there is currently a birthday sale on but Film Convert is a $149 plugin currently $99 but with Halation it is $199 currently $133 so I think that's going to be a big issue with the likes of these plugins where they're asking for a premium price when the tool is already included in Resolve, or as we're about to see a little bit later, um, included in a plugin which is there to harness the like of building a film look. So, interesting. I am going to view the halation area, and we should be seeing this just around the brighter parts of the image. I wouldn't inherently recommend in messing around with the uh, strength too much, if you wanted to see more halation, I would actually go into the node prior and instead bump up the highlights because this is technically what the halation is doing. We're just, maybe if we do that on the log uh, wheel. So if you see the, the stick over here in increasing the highlights on the log wheel, we can dial that in with a lot more refinement. Same up here with the gaps through the trees. That's essentially how halation should be working. And I think um, the individual sliders on the plugin itself is a little bit too overpowering. Uh, but where we're at here at this plugin, I'm okay with this image. It looks, it looks okay. Um, again, I think 
Film Convert can be quite liberal with how much green it wants to give you on the default setting. I think this would be looking at um, a film stock with quite a high sensitivity, but we don't want to show that because we're in the middle of the day. So let's just reduce that to 50, and there we go. So that's a filmic looking image. If I was to make uh, further adjustments, I'm not too fond of the redness, I think, that has been introduced from the film stock because it's... Uh, this is the start of spring and I'm getting the end of autumn feeling. So I'm just going to make a qualification on the tree and bring this down. There we go. So now, end of autumn, beginning of spring. And I might even be inclined just to reduce the contrast to touch. Okay, so that is fairly decent. Film Convert, as I said, I've used it for many years. It is a very good plugin. Um, the selection of film uh, stocks to emulate is wide and vast and it does a pretty good job with one singular node without having many other adjustments. So now that being said, let's have a look at Film Look Creator. So the Film Look Creator allows you to modify both the color and physical attributes of an image to resemble motion picture film stock. This is not the same as Film Convert. It doesn't necessarily replicate a film stock from a particular manufacturer, but it essentially provides a, a foundational black magic film look that we can then adapt to. So there are nearly 60 internal parameters within the effect, and you will notice that many of them are also independent effects that can be used inside of Resolve, but now it's all neatly managed within one window. And as it's scene driven, this will work with any type of footage as long as it's correctly color managed, which we will touch upon in a moment. And what I also find interesting is that the white balance and tint, they use chromatic adaptation to realistically shift a scene's light source. And even in this situation, when you think that you've gone too far and your scene starts to fall apart, you can then use the skin bias parameter to balance back the skin. So it's these features where I find it to be that little bit more uh, proactive with getting better results than the likes of um, external plugins. Um, and one thing to note, when um, I, I noted that uh, it's scene driven so we can use any type of footage as long as it's color managed, obviously Film Convert does the same thing, but we have to select the camera profile and you know, say if we don't have the Canon 60 Mac II profile installed, we then have to download it. And um, these installations, they do add up. Um, I've never really have more than five or so at a time because they're like three to 400 megabytes. So that can sometimes be an issue, but enough of that. Let's go to film look and let's see how great we can get this image. No, nope, that's the wrong one, film look creator. I'm just gonna create a node beforehand, I like before. Okay, so we do have built-in presets from 65mm, Nostalgic, and Bleach Bypass, but before we even touch those, we need to ensure that we're working with the correct color space, and then, even with those inputted, you're going to want to make sure that your color settings are prim and proper, then we could possibly go back to the presets. So let's have a look at our color space first. Now, if you don't know what color space you're working within, just go to the raw tab here, and I can see that I'm in Color Science Gen 5, Color Space Black Magic Design with the Gamma Black Magic Design film. So you would then just look to find these in these two drop down menus. Uh, there it is. So that's looking great. I now need to make my primary adjustments. So I'm going to ramp up the exposure here to make sure that we've got a nice even tone spread across our scopes. Probably have to bring that down a touch. Introduce some nice filmic contrast. I mean, I've made what? Two adjustments? And that's already looking pretty good. I tell you what I would say though, is let's knock off these parameters, which are more 
um, related to the celluloid properties as well as the lens and the camera. And perhaps after Resolve comes out of the beta, it would be nice to maybe see these um, off by default. Uh, with that said, now let's look at the highlights. So the highlight slider, this does work um, like the highlight log wheel. So if I bump it up, we can just see if we pay attention to the uh, sky in the background, that's the highlight of the image and that's all we're really seeing adjusted. It's not like using the game wheel. Um, but I would actually like to make that a little, a little bit brighter. Then we have the fade. This is like raising uh, the black point of the image. So, you know, some celluloid uh, doesn't necessarily have crushed blacks. It's a little bit more milky. You could bring this up here and you can see you sort of have that, dare I say it, that retro -y look. I'm not sure retro -y is a word. Uh, let's remove that. So my white balance is looking pretty decent. I would like to make it a little bit colder again. Just remove that redness from the scene. But also not to mess with her skin tone that much. So I'm just going to slightly bring the tint over. And now what we can do is look at adjusting the skin bias. So this lets you adjust the skin tone um, from essentially a warmer, darker, more saturated look to either then a rosy, brighter, less saturated. So this is ideally useful for when you're moving the white balance and the tint and you basically need to rebalance where the skin is set. So here it's a lot warmer. Bring it up. We have a little bit more of a cold look. So I'm going to bring that down just to keep the warmth of her face uh, the primary focal point of this image. So I'm happy with these settings at the moment. This is, this is looking pretty good. And again, from the days of gone past where there was multiple nodes, a lot of different structures going on, this is looking like a very nice image from just this one effect added. So now we have the split tone and often when we look at uh, old film, especially 16 millimeter film, um, the highlights can have a very distinctive tinge to them. And we can introduce this with the split tone tool just by adding this. But let's say if I wanna go for a little bit of a yellowish look. So of course we have now moved beyond the aspect of it being a completely natural looking grade and we've gone a little bit more. But for this grade, because we're comparing it to Film Convert, I'm just gonna turn that off. I'm gonna enable my vignette and make the slightest adjustment. I say slightest, I might as well ramp it all the way up. Again, bring that focal point straight onto the subject and not let the, uh, the audience's gaze wander too much throughout the image. Halation. So, again, Resolve Studio does have an, a halation effect, but now we've got a simplified version built into the film look creator. I'm just gonna enable this. And quite like before, if we look at the stick, we can sort of make our adjustments. Maybe if I can get a view and point of both the highlights in the trees behind as well as the stick. Okay, that's looking pretty nice. Now, unlike using the standalone halation effect, we're unable to view the isolated regions um, with the film that creator. So while a lot of these tools that are found within the film that creator are also elsewhere in Resolve, we are getting sort of the watered down version when it comes to customization, so to speak. Uh, Bloom, it is a another popular filmic associated effect and I feel like bloom and haze and anything of the likes is something that you really want to dial in very sparingly because too much of it can really start to ruin the effect. That's looking great. I'm going to go to some green and see if we've just got a nice 35 millimeter preset. probably a little bit too strong. So I'm gonna knock this down. Okay, looking very nice. 
And then we have Flickr and Gateweave, which are going to be related to uh, the camera uh, when the celluloid is, is passing in front of the gate. Is this inherently something that we want for a digital image where we're just trying to make it look a little bit more cinematic? Not necessarily. So this time around, we're just going to disable these. And then we have film gate, which is going to apply a matte to the image without having to go to output blanking or bring in a PNG. So I'm going to do that, remove the curvature. And this is our final image using the Resolve film look. So film convert versus DaVinci Resolve's film look creator, two somewhat different tools, but both have very similar end goals in ensuring that the user's media looks like film. Which do you think looked best, Film Convert or DaVinci Resolve? I've been a user of Film Convert and I think going forward I'm certainly going to be a user of the Film Look Creator. And I have to say, I think because DaVinci Resolve and Blackmagic in general are very good at handling colour science as well as skin tones, the way in which we can approach skin tones as well as the overall colour information within the Film Look Creator, it does give it that slight edge. Likewise, with the additional tools found within Resolve Studio brought into that one package, including Halation, which you're not going to have to pay more for, it does give it that extra edge. So going forward, uh, given that there is a number of film uh, emulation plugins on the market, it's going to be interesting to see how they move or react to DaVinci Resolve's offering. And again, given that this is the beta, we can only see that after some feedback from uh, current testing that this tool is going to get better. So I've been Lewis with Fadibo. I'll catch you guys next week. And remember to subscribe.